Welcome back, Family Bible Time. We are in the Psalms. Psalms 5, 38, 41 and 42. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the sun shining. Thank you that, Lord, you are enthroned above the clouds. Lord, you are in heaven and you know exactly what we need at all times. Please teach us. Speak to us through your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, we are going to be going rapidly today just because we have to leave. And this is to the choir master. For the flutes, a psalm of David. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. Their inmost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the abundance of their transgressions, cast them out. For they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as a shield, as with a shield. Well, isn't this good? Just the reality that the Lord does actually deal with the wicked. But he does actually protect those who take refuge in him. Mm. Sometimes you can feel in this world as if the wicked are able to get away with it. Like, like they, 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 they do sometimes. The Lord allows the, allows the wicked to do certain things. But sometimes it can feel as though that they can, they can just do that. Whereas the reality is, God is watching. And God is bringing their end a step nearer with every breath they take. Well, that's Psalm 5. And a wonderful psalm it is too. Psalm 38, 38. I love this psalm. This is another one of David's penitential psalms. You say, what's a penitential psalm? A penitential psalm is a psalm of repentance. Do you ever feel as though you know you've sinned? You know that things are not right between you and God, but you, you don't know what to say. You don't know how to actually talk to God about your sin. Well, this is actually David doing business with God about his sin. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's really interesting because this is David doing business with God about his sin when God has been bringing him low about his sin. Let's look at it. Psalm 38. A psalm of David for the memorial offering. O oh Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. 
for your arrows have sunk into me, and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh. Because of your indignation, there's no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I'm utterly bowed down and prostrate. All the day I go about mourning. For my sides are filled with burning. There's no soundness in my flesh. I'm feeble and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. What's it like to be walking in sin and convicted about your sin and troubled? It's like this, isn't it? But for a believer, this is, this is just almost unbelievably good in this psalm. O oh Lord, all my longing is before you. My sighing is not hidden before you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me, and the light of my eyes, it, is, it, has, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions stand aloof from my plague, and my nearest kin stand far off. This is David saying, Lord, all these troubles that I'm having right now, because of my sin, you're seeing them. And why would you why would you say that to God? You've been disciplined by your parents, haven't you? When your parents are disciplining you, do they care for you? Yes, they do. Are they, are they, do they discipline you because they hate you? No, because they love you. So hold on a minute. Let's imagine for a moment that you've sinned and you're suffering now under the hand of God's discipline. Does God still care for you? Well, the answer here is yes, and you see it in David. David's suffering, but he's looking to God within his suffering. And he's saying, all oh, my longing is before you. My sighing is not hidden from you. He's saying, Lord, you see it and you care. Those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek my hurt speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I'm like a deaf man. I do not hear it. Like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I've become like a man who does not hear and in whose mouth are no rebukes. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. For I said, only let them not rejoice over me who boast against me when my foot slips. For I'm ready to fall and my pain is ever before me. I confess my iniquity. I am sorry for my sin. But my foes are vigorous. They are mighty. And many are those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good accuse me because I follow after good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. I just want to hold this out to you. Look. Just because God is disciplining for you for your sin, does that mean that you can't cry out to him? Does it mean that you can't look to him for help? Does it mean that you can't rely upon him and entrust yourself to him? Actually, I'm going to say that God proves himself to be the one who whom you can rely upon even when he is chastening you. He's the one to turn to. And, and actually, that should be how we ought to be as parents um, with our children. You, I, I know I want you, even if I'm disciplining you, um, I, I want you to be able to come to me even 
if I, if, even if you're feeling the pain of the discipline, I care about that. It saddens me to see it, and that's how it should be. Um, well, that was Psalm 38. Psalm 41 and 42. How are we doing for time? You going to do it? Let's go. To the choir master. They had a choir master. A psalm of David. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the, in the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. Do not, you do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O oh Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words. While his heart gathers iniquity, when he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say, a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend, in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O oh Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting Amen and Amen. 42, book 2. You know there are five books of the Psalms? This is book 2. To the choir master, a masculine of the sons of Korah. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O oh God. I can never read this without thinking of that poor pastor um, who went to America and uh, uh, it was an American pastor who came to England that's right and, and preached about the the the, uh, the different pants in the Bible the pants of the heart and the pants of the soul and and so on anyway it's not so good it means to long for. Um, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Think of this longing of David to be with God, to be near God. Think of him cut off from the temple, from the presence of God. Now think about this. How long is it since you were able to really draw near to the presence of God, where you, where you really felt like you came near to God in prayer? My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night while they say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of the Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep calls to deep, 
At the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. You know, if you for a moment as a, as a believer in God, if things are going badly for you, unbelievers will look at you and say, where is your God now? Because from an unbelieving perspective, it has to go well in this life. Mm. But as a believer, our hopes, our hopes are in God and, and our ultimate hopes are for the next life, not this life. Uh, and so what we long for is to be able to draw near to God, to have fellowship with him, and, and to be, be near to him. Well, may that be our experience today. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to be with us, to strengthen us today for all that we must do. Please give us your help. Please allow us in our prayers, in our fellowship with you, allow us, please, to draw near to you, to come near into your presence. We, we ask you to please forgive our sins and have mercy upon us and look upon us even if you're disciplining us. Please pity us and help us to draw near to you and to trust you at all times. We ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. God bless you. Sorry to rush through this, but we have to go. So we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.